Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. Mine's going really good. We're just kind of piddling around out here in the garage today, so I thought I'd make a couple videos. So listen, I want to make a, a video about the flood. And you know, a lot of people say that, you know, the flood's impossible. They believe it was a local flood. They say you can't prove the flood, and there's, no, there's not enough water to flood the whole earth. That's what people think. Well, listen, when the flood took place, all the earth was gathered in one place. There was only one continent. That's it. One land mass on one half, and it was all water everywhere else. And there weren't these big mountain ranges that we have right now. The Cascades weren't there, the Himalayas, the Sierras, none of those mountain ranges were there. The earth was relatively flat with some rolling hills and some little mountains like Mount Ararat, but nothing, nothing huge. So the flood comes about. And people listen, there are mud flows that when these waves of mud, two and three thousand feet high, came across the entire one big continent. And you can see all these different layers of mud in the fossil layer they were laid down very, very quickly, like within hours. And the same stacks of different mud layers and different fossil layers are identical. It doesn't matter if you look in the Grand Canyon. It doesn't matter if you look in China, Mongolia, Russia, or clear to Australia. The layers and the sediment is exactly the same worldwide. And also, there are literally hundreds, hundreds of different civilizations all over the globe. None of these people talk to each other, none of these people know each other, but yet every single culture, from the American Indians to South America to China to Russia to the little islands out in the Pacific, every single one has a story of the flood. The flood is the most easily proven thing in the Bible. It happened. Now listen to this. There's a little tidbit in Genesis 10, 25. And it's going through here and it's giving us genealogies. And here's one of those genealogies. It says, And Ebner were born two sons, and the name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. So you go down a couple generations, one of Noah's grandsons named Peleg, it says during his time the earth was divided. So this is what happened. Noah lands on Mount Ararat. He gets out, he comes down just far enough to where he gets some good farming soil and he stays right there. Noah never left the foothills around Mount Ararat. He never left. When you read uh, some of the other uh, pseudo-gospels, like uh, Jasher and Enoch, and a few of those other books, it talks about Nimrod, and Nimrod uh, being in Iraq, and Ham came down and he settled Egypt. Egypt is known as the land of Ham. Well, in these other pseudo-books, it shows Nimrod actually communicating, sending messengers up to talk to Noah. And he wants like the ballast stones and a few other things that uh, Noah has. And what he wants to do is he wants to set them up as idols. Because he's trying to portray himself as a great thing. And uh, Noah always refused, wouldn't even talk back to him. And he, one time he said he was going to go up there and just wipe him out if he didn't give him what he wanted. But Noah never did. So listen, Noah never left the foothills of Ararat. This is what I think happened. This is my opinion. After Noah landed on Mount Ararat and all the animals were let out, there was one continent. And God dispersed all the animals exactly where he wanted them to be. Exactly where he wanted them to be. And the minute all the animals were where God wanted them to be, then he separated this one big continent, and the continents floated out to where they are today. 
So listen, when all the continents started jostling about, like when uh, the continent of India, whatever continent that sits on, started pushing against the continent that rushes on, that's what made the Himalayas. When the Pacific plate started rubbing against the North American plate, hitting it, that's what created the Sierras. Our great mountain ranges were all created after the flood, not before. So anyway, that's how it all worked. So uh, I would imagine <laughs> I would imagine this guy Peleg, the minute the ground starts moving and people start seeing that, I would imagine they all freaked out. And I would think there was a whole bunch of them that, you know, started heading back to the boat thinking, man, we've had it. So anyway, when you think about that's the way it happened, that's why there are a lot of places that have unique animals just to them, like, like the kangaroos in Australia and different things like that. Because when God separated the animals, then he separated the continents and these animals had no way of ever intermingling with one another again. So guys, anyway, that's how the flood happened. That's what took place. That's how I understand it. So anyway, heaven or hell you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.